I hate OBS. Every time I close OBS, it just... Let's start over again. What's up, chat? Sorry for being late today. I actually had some last minute changes and that intro just threw me off. I did my intro so good today. I can't do it again. Anyways, um, the original guest, some of you guys know who it was. Um, unfortunately, that person doesn't feel good anymore. They're feeling a little sick. Um, they will not be able to join us. So if you were watching me yesterday, you may know who the guest is or guest was. But unfortunately now, because uh, they're not feeling too good, I had to improvise. So I do have another guest. Uh, they are ready to join us. They're in the background waiting. I'm going to bring them on here in just a sec. We're going to say hi to Patrick here in a minute. And then we are going to do some live hacking. And you guys are going to pick the target as long as it has a bug bounty program or a VDP, Vuln Disclosure Program. Yeah, as long as it has a VDP or a bug bounty program, uh, we're going to do some recon. Patrick is going to show me how he does his recon. Uh, I'm going to learn some stuff from him. You guys are going to pick up some good stuff from him. And we're going to just kind of figure out how everybody else does their work. Um, so before I bring on Patrick, start doing me a favor, look for your programs, anything that has a star dot scope. So stuff like Wells Fargo, IBM, GM, um, all those programs forward, come up with a list, throw them in there. Patrick and I are going to put up a poll and we're going to do some recon together, but let's bring him on really quick. Uh, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I don't have your audio. Oh, just, yeah, there we yeah. go. How you doing, man? Chad, let me know if you can hear Patrick. Um, if you know, it, hold on, before I do this intro and let you introduce yourself, I've already done my recon interview with Patrick. So there is no interview today. Uh, if you want to check out his interview, <laughs> go to my YouTube uh, channel. His interview is up there. Really, really good stuff on recon and life and uh, work-life balance. But introduce yourself, man. For people that haven't seen your interview, who are you? What are you doing? How long have you been in bug bounties? Um, so, Yes. Hey, Ben. My name is Patrick. I've been doing bug bounties for seven years. And right now I'm working as a triage manager for EMEA here in Germany for HackerOne. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me, man. I know it was super last minute. You, you're a lifesaver, dude. I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you so much for doing this with me today. Um, Patrick and I go way back, <laughs> way, way back before uh, there was even a community and we have done some really cool stuff before in the past. Um, so what a better time to do this again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let you uh, in a minute, once chat gives us some targets, we're going to have you share your screen, switch to that. And then I don't know, we'll figure it out. We're going to switch back and forth between your screen and my screen at some point. Uh, but chat. Let me know. Uh, let's start a list right now. Give us your top. Uh, give us your targets. What do you want us to look at? It could be AT and T. I know it's not the most. How do I say this? It's not the best option. But think about recon. What is a good company that you're gonna make money from? If we gave you data, if we did recon and show you guys what would do, um, what company would you like? So there's Starbucks, there's Snapchat, there's Apple. Optional. What are you hacking on, dude? Snapchat, Apple.com. Do you want to do an organization, Patrick, or do you want to do like just a website? Whatever. I don't really care. Which one do you think would be easier, though? Do you think we should do a whole organization where we go and like look at all the assets? Or do yeah, we... it could be fun. Okay. Um, people are saying Snapchat a lot. Um, whoops. Let's do Snapchat. Screw it. Interesting target. So let's do it as an organization. We're going to put the... Time is 11.40 here, my time. Let's do 40 minutes to an hour and see what we find. Okay. All right. So we're going to approach. So I saw more people saying Snap and Snapchat and Starbucks. Starbucks isn't a big scope, I don't think. So we're going to do Snapchat. Um, all right. Let me switch to this screen. There we go. Um, all right. Tell me, Matt, what is the number one thing you do when you get a brand new program? And it's an organization like Snapchat, Google, Facebook, when everything is in scope. Um, usually, I try to find out what their top-level domains are, okay. like which which domains belong to them. Obviously, they don't only own like Snapchat.com, but also SC minus Corp, and then yeah. a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, but the thing I know about Snapchat right out of my head is they have some sort of DNS protection, so it's pretty 
tough to find the associated domains for Snapchat. Yeah. Because they try to hide that. Okay. Um, so it's so usually what I do with not Snapchat is going to um, do some reverse um, who is records. Yeah, yeah. Do you pull the email address like and then looking, look it up? Yeah, looking at the registrants of yeah. of Snapchat, for example. Usually it's just like domains at some domain domain .com. Com. Yeah, yeah. And I use a service for that, which is called Domain IQ, I think. Okay. Do you want to share your screen? I can, sure. Let me just log in. Um, okay. Otherwise. Um, while you do that, let me, oops. Uh, you guys see our chats. Mm, that's not good. Bad ops on my end. Hold on. I'm going to switch to this screen, this screen, actually. All right. Listen, I've never done this. I've never had somebody hack with me live. This is the first time I've ever done this when we both, me and my guests that I have on the show, go after a live target. Okay. So bear with me. There's going to be some um, mistakes on my end. But um, we're going to have some fun with it. Okay. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, man. I know I have fun hacking with you in the past. Uh, it's not gonna be an issue. I just wish I could hide my friends list on um, Discord. Nah, I guess this is good enough. All right, so I'm gonna switch my screen to do some background work on Snapchat while Patrick is logging into his services. Oh, there we yeah, go. so I have it open right now. Can I just share my screen? Is it yeah, your, the entire thing now? Uh, your screen is, let me see. Yeah, it's whatever. You, oh, you haven't shared anything. You can either select the entire screen or just the, um, whatever panel you want to show me. Oh, it's not showing the pop-up. Let me just figure it out real quick. Okay. Um, so let's look at, I'm going to pull up um, their Snapchat program. One of my favorite things to do on HackerOne is go to their actual program. Uh, come on. Is it not Snap? Okay, it's working out. Perfect. Okay, let me do this really quick. So one of my favorite things to do as um, when it comes down to hacking programs, which, okay, I, if they have a public program, number one thing I love to do, it's worked out in my favor every time I've done it. Go to Hacktivity for that program and then click on Disclosed. Look, there's already recon done for you guys. There is, okay, well, this is mine. It doesn't count, but there's Snapchat.com in that one. There is SC... Dash Corp, which is a corporate domain that will have a lot of garbage in there. Well, not garbage, it's not fair, but a lot of websites on there. There is SCCDN, so that also is owned by them. Um, ObviousEngine.com is apparently an um, acquisition by them. Let's see what else. Um, Bitstrips.com is apparently theirs. I would have not known that. Um, Scan.me is apparently one of theirs. So this alone gives you an idea where to hack, right? Like it tells you to have a ton of domains. But let's look at um, what Patrick's got for us really quick. Uh, let's go so here. yes, um, actually, I was I was lying about the, okay, the I'm service I'm right using. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. I'm on your screen right now. Okay, perfect. So um, a few weeks ago, I can you see my screen? Not yet. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit blur. I can see your screen, but it's a little bit blurry. Um, but that's okay. If anything is not like, if you wanted to show me something so you can screenshot maybe later and share a screenshot yeah, with can, me. Okay. I can do that as well. Let me just see. Oh no. Perfect. Okay. So, um, I'm using a service called security trails right. and do you pay for this it? This is basically, um, I don't, but I'm currently beta testing it and it's, okay. it's actually amazing. Like it's, it's almost cheating in recon because it, gives you anything that you need. Like it has a tab for the subdomains of Snapchat, including like, you know, everything that they have, like 688 just for the root domain here. But the other cool thing is they also show you the associated domains. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, not all of them, but, uh, but a good chunk of them. Can you screenshot the domain one that you just said the last tab, uh, that one, that associated domains, so I can show the chat uh, as a screenshot really oh, quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's, your screen is a little bit blurry, I think, is because we're doing a million things at once together. But um, um, someone's, saying, someone's saying do it on Google Meet. Let me try Google Meet with you really quick. Yeah, sure. That might uh, make it better because I really want people to see the stuff you're doing. Because to be honest, I've used um, their services before, but I've never like looked around if that makes sense. I've just pulled out like domains from it and left. I've never clicked around their website. Um, so it seems like an interesting way to do it. All right, let me send you an invite, live hacking. 
and let me add a Google link to this. All right, I'm going to drop you a link right now. Try that. Let's see if that's better. I'm going to turn this off, if you don't mind, so your camera works there. Make sure you sign out of this before you uh, go there, because your camera won't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, see you in a bit. See you, dude. Okay, um, let's try Google Meets chat really quick. This way, maybe you guys could um, also see what Patrick and I are doing. Yo. Okay, I don't have his audio just yet. Hello, hello. Okay, I can hear you now. It's because you're using an external camera. Google doesn't. Um, what I can do is I can have. Okay, share your screen on here, and I'll turn off your uh, camera on this. I'll bring your camera. Oh wait, you're good. You're good. It's fixed now. It's fixed. Whatever you did just worked. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of gain on your audio because you're really quiet. And there we go. Is it? Can you see it now? Um. I can see it, but it's still blurry, unfortunately. Oh, wait. Oh, it's a little bit better. Uh, can you zoom in a little bit? Um, three times, maybe? There we go. Perfect. All right. Chat, I'm going to switch screen. Let me know if that works. It should work. Uh, maybe one more zoom just to make it easier. But these are all the associate domains that the, this service has found. I mean, yeah, it checks exactly out, right? right. Snap.com and Spectacles are theirs. Snapchat blog I did not know about. Uh, wow. Me neither, actually. Snap I've store. Yeah, I've actually never used this service. I know that that Bitmoji is one of their acquisitions, mm -hmm. I think. And the cool thing about this, um, but I think this is also like a better feature. Um, they also have mergers and acquisitions. So if they if Snapchat has bought something, it would list up here. Wow. And you can then inspect like their acquisitions just from in here. And like this is the free version, pretty... right? I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay. No, I'm saying, like, do you have to pay to DC these data? Yeah, pretty sure you have to. Okay. But I'm not sure, like, at what level that you, you know, have to be to see this data. But it's, Fair enough. It's actually, um, it's quite, it's it's helpful. It's super helpful. Yeah. Okay. Um, chat, let me know if you are, if, or if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know if you use security trials. And if you do, is it helpful or not? Okay, so let's go look at the... Um, associate domains maybe or the reverse DNS okay that one works okay um, okay so let me just say which ones I knew I know Snapkit is theirs um, all the S what, what isn't is SC Corp on there I don't see it on there do you see it uh, no it's not because it's weird seeing I know Snapchat heavily um, relies on Google so it's really weird yep. seeing them on Amazon, especially for Snap Maps and SnapMap.org. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it gets interesting because um, you know that most of their stuff is on Google, but once they put something on Amazon, like it kind of gets interesting. But yeah, I mean, SC their static might be like you know, S three buckets or stuff like that. Um, can we see what the reverse DNS shows? Absolutely. Uh... Yeah, just some, some yeah. mail services. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, all right, so what's next? Let me so let me see what I can pull from them based on... Um, maybe I could do cert.sh instead, just, just to make it easier, just to compare to what I usually do, right? Because yeah. a lot of people that watch this, they know that I rely on cert.sh heavily. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to look for the organization Snap. I think Snap is... Um, let's just get a who is on it, I guess. Or let's go to snapchat.com and see who owns the certificate, maybe. Introducing Spotlight. Whoa. Actually, you Ben, you just you just got me the idea to look just for snap.com and for the associated domains. I mean, well, snap.com. And, are, you, are you doing that right now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is it not showing? Oh, you can use zoom in um, maybe three, four times. Oh, yeah, just a second. So I, I just did the same thing right now, but not for snapchat.com, but for snap.com. See, Bitmoji makes sense, right? That wasn't there in the, in the last one. Yeah. 
And also you have Zen.li, which is also wow. a company they acquired and also brought into Scope not too long ago. So it's interesting. Quite okay. Yeah. So see, finding the parent company name <clears throat> is really helpful, but I still don't see SC Corp, dude. It blows my mind that that's not on. Oh, SC. no, but SC-Corp, right? It's not yeah. on there. Can you do I mean, SC-Corp and see what comes up? That net? It's dot com, right? .net, dot net. Yeah, subdomain finder dot c ninety nine is really really good too. Yeah, it it shows like it it shows the subdomain, but it doesn't show as asso yeah. associated. Yeah. I think they've done a really good job of hiding this. Um, they've done a really good um, job of hiding this uh, domain. They did, but there is another functionality here. Um, but I need to play around with this a little because you can actually like select something like okay. there's a SQL um, editor here. Um, let's see. All right. So I'm looking at snap, but snap on credit is not what I want. Snapchat.com is the right one. So Snapchat came up. Snap Dev is another one I know they own. I've looked at that a few times. But I'm uh, Snap Ads is one of them. But it's hard to tell which ones are really theirs and which ones are not uh, Snapchats, right? Because we're going yeah. based on O being Snap. Um, and if I do Snapchat, I don't think that's going to work. Okay, so if we do Snapchat as an org, the, a lot of good stuff comes up, like Snap Dev, um, feel feeling so nice. I don't think that's theirs, is it, Chat? That can't be theirs, right? Feeling so nice. Why would it be theirs? It's so hard to tell because they are using like this reverse DNS Mark Monitor security stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like. Paying for a service like yours that you're using is really helpful. Oh, scprot.net is there too. I, can, I remember that from when I was doing recon on them. So it's finding their main, like what I want to call like mainstream domains, but it's not finding the corporate internal stuff like sc.dev. Snap.dev is theirs apparently too. That is theirs, yeah. Snap.dev is theirs too. All right, let's start a, let's start a notepad.txt and we'll just dump stuff in here for now. Snap-dev.net. Um, I may uh, share this with the subscribers on their channel later. I mean, you can copy paste these on your own, but if you want to be lazy and you're a subscriber, I got you. All right, so let me make a list of all these like domains that I'm seeing. And if you want to make a list and drop it for me, that'll be helpful. And then um, we'll see where it goes. How's that sound, Patrick? Um, I actually just wanted to show you like another feature they offer, which okay. I just tried out. Go for it. I'm on your screen right now. Oh, you are? Oh, let me just uh, share it again. Uh, okay, so. Can you see this one? Yes. Oh, they give you a SQL query. Okay. It's 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 fantastic. Like I just got introduced to this today, and I don't think it's even live that they have this, but it's it's nice. So you can do a, like a simple select statement. You know, mm -hmm. hostname is actually the subdomain. Apex is the top level domain, and I'm just looking for the hosts that are in the top level domain, and they that are start with like sc dash, and then you know the percentage. Uh, sign for you know the wild card. Yeah, yeah yeah and then you can get like all of the ones that but that's a little risky there. though yeah 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 it's, it's absolutely risky but if you um if you know that they use like a, a scheme for their stuff like like the sc-corp you may be lucky in finding like more stuff 
I mean, yeah. I mean, if, I mean, outside of that, for like companies like Verizon Media, it's really helpful too. I right? just put in Verizon Media or Paranoids and it pops up. We uh, that we experimented with this with Recon Dev, uh, not just for the domain, but actually like querying a particular like app name, so you can only find those. Let's say if you're looking for Paranoids within every supplement on the internet, you can just literally look yeah. for Wildcard Paranoids, Wildcard Paranoids, and that's a good I mean, tip for can also do is like if if you know that your target has like you know multiple um organizations across the world on different top level domain you can just do a snapchat wildcard the end yeah, yeah yeah so to get all the tlds yeah because sometimes you know they they do have stuff on you know their romanian website or whatever right. and it's it's actually quite fun because a lot of companies do own a lot of domains mm -hmm a lot of different reasons and you know you can find the weirdest things on there snapchat dot rocks <laughs> <laughs> wow well, that's and a lot of it, stuff yeah it absolutely is okay um so let's go ahead and let I me mean, make this list really quick now that you've showed me this yeah. i'm going to make a list of some domains for us to go after and then let's see where that goes um All right, let's see. What else did we find? Snapchat. We did SC Corp. Uh, SnapDev is on there. What else? I think we got everything that's... So I think Cert.sh did a better job of showing us um, their internal domains. But what Patrick has a really good job of doing, uh, giving us like a better view of the entire organization if you're not going after the internal stuff. I like to go after internal stuff first because most people don't look for that kind of stuff. Most people are busy with like looking for XSS and uh, low hanging fruit. I like to go for these, like if, especially if a company owns everything that is in scope, right? Yeah. Uh, spectacles, let's put that in there. Snapchat blog. How do you choose subdomains out of list of subdomains? Uh, how do you pick yours, Patrick? Like, how do you pick what to look at after you have a list of subdomains? Um, I usually just run each subdomain through like a mess and see which ones give me results at all. Because sometimes, you know, they're just placeholders, if you will. Let's do um, that, actually. Let's pull this. Uh, I'm going to, to switch to you right now. Let's pull a list of subdomains, if you don't mind. Um, whether you want to use... Um, if you want to use your security trials subdomains that you just found just pull them i'm on your screen by the way um yeah. and then show us like what do you do next like how do you do it with amas how do you do it um whatever it is that you do next after you have a list uh can you just share the list you have with me so i just pulled top level domains um here let me switch to me i'm gonna go to our chat actually there we go this is everything that I have. Um, no subdomains yet. I yeah. can pull subdomains for you if you want. Um, Let me pull a list on... Re uh, I can pull a list from recon.dev if you want. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm just showing you how I'm doing that with my recon machine. Let me know if you have me again on there. Okay, I have you again. You're on here. So what I first do is I create a folder, Snapchat. Okay. And then I go into the Snapchat folder, create a file, and then I paste them on here. He's a real hacker. He doesn't use Nano like I do chat. And then I have a script called ams.py. It essentially just runs ams like recursively on the list. How many times like how big the list is, I think 10 of them concurrently. And then I wait. Yeah, and as you can see here, like AMS uses a lot of tools and also mm -hmm. one of them are like subfinder, asset finder. Yeah. Um, if you if you have seen the, the interview I gave, um, I actually shared a GitHub link for using third party subdomain scanning tools. And yeah. And then I do you have an API key for like Spice and like like all those other services or you just have a default? Um, so I, I actually have API keys for most of them. 
And I do pay for, I would say, 70% of them. Okay. Um, but not for Spice, because I didn't find their, uh, like, results to be, like, satisfying at all. Fair enough, yeah, okay. That's interesting. It's finding a lot of good stuff, though. Yeah. Um, at the end of each AMS scan, I also look... Like, I, c I can show you in a second, because AMS shows you, like, where the results are coming from. Right, right. And all of the domains it's giving me here are the ones that are actually resolving to an IP address. So mm. there are actually no false positives in here or, wow. you know, wildcard things. It's eliminating all of them at the moment. All right. Someone in the chat said he didn't have to input the ASN. What? Yeah. I mean, the ASN thing is a different approach, right? You don't have to do everything all at once. Our approach was let's find the domains. Let's go after them. And then when we're done with looking at these particular domains, we can go after um the ASNs, for example you can do both it's just there's no right or wrong way of doing it right it's just whatever works for your approach is how you do it do you go after yeah. ASNs? i mean for snapchat i wouldn't say it makes a lot of sense because they i don't even think they own like their own ip space they do they but it's have super small on google on some cloud services which yeah. makes absolutely sense for a mm -hmm. company like snapchat because they are young it's you know a couple of years old and for them, they, they need services and they need them right away. And it, I would I don't think they they even own like an IP space, so it wouldn't make too much sense yeah. to go after the IP space. For older companies like AT and T, it makes a lot of sense. Also, Verizon Media, because you know over the years they grew so much that it All does right. make sense to go after the ASN. But for hip young companies as Snapchat, I wouldn't say it makes sense. They do have everything distribute it uh, in the cloud. So what uh, what kind of box do you have? Someone's asking, what is the, your VPS specs? Um, it's actually quite big. It's on Hetzner. It's a German, okay. German hosting company. It has 128 gigabits of RAM, Damn. I think over 100 cores. And it's, it's around big. about 150 euro a month. This is a good so, investment, though, right? Right, it's paying off pretty well. It looks like it is, but it's it's also kind of frightening, and it, but it keeps you motivating because you know that you pay like each month, and it's yeah, you got to make the money back, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, stuff like this you could do on a five dollar digital ocean machine as well. Yeah. But whenever you are doing like this AMS stuff on a hundred domains concurrently. Like you're running out on, on on CPU real quick. I'm gonna see if I can pin you to the screen instead for now while we wait. Yeah, we go. Um, what's your favorite like data set that you use regularly, or do you like all of them equally? You don't care. Um, so from from my experience, I would say. I get a lot of things from GitHub subdomains. Okay. Um, I get a lot of things from um, actually uh, security trails. Okay. And there were was also one that I had to remove because it it would just spam like old garbage. My, <laughs> yeah. And I think it's it's like a thing that their developers did prevent people from mass using their APIs, which is fair. So yeah. I just remove them. And I think cert.sh is doing a, a quite a good job. Too. I think cert.sh is one of the most reliable ones. It's really, really fast to see how quick they get the data and then publish it. Um, I got over census because of how limited it got. They try to do too much, I feel like. Yeah, and census is like super expensive and I run out of API queries like yeah, it's not last time I tried to get an account with census, it was like 900 bucks a month. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Okay, let's switch to your other screen really quick. Oh, you stopped sharing. Oh, yeah, um, I just needed to log in again because no worries. Uh, I needed a second screen wallet. I'm gonna make a domains.txt on my end. I'm gonna put those in there. Um, I'm just going to run my domains.txt through an xargs with recon.dev because I don't have a fancy setup like he does with MS. 
I like doing uh, OSINT for subdomains more than anything else. Plus, like, we scan the entire internet, so I hope we get a lot of these certificates anyways. But I may be missing a lot of stuff. But I'm going to do this, yeah, okay. And you have to get the, the API keys once, but once you have them, I mean, you're good to go. All right. Put that in there, and then we'll just... Um, let's do a clean version of it. We'll do jq-r. We'll pull the domains. And we will feed this into... Um, recon.dev.txt Okay, that's gonna do its thing. It's gonna run uh, recon.dev, which is my service, full disclosure. Um, it's gonna pull every domain name that's in domains.txt, which is a list of all these. And it's gonna write them all out to recon.dev.txt. Uh, just a loop going through every single one of them. Um, now let's go look at Patrick's screen really quick. Unpin, oops, don't pin me, dude. There we go. Am I not presenting? I am. You are. Uh, I just got to zoom in for me a little bit more, if you don't mind. Okay, so I'm on my second window right now. Okay. Can you zoom in like three more times for me, please? Three more? One, two, three. There okay. we go. Cool. Chat, let me know if you can see it. Um. So the way AMS works is it creates all of those folders for okay. each domain that it, you know, does its work on. And I have written a shortcut for each of them, which basically just bit, does a cat and then goes into each folder and looks for the. Sorry, can you can you zoom in two more times, man? Sorry, it's it's hard for people that are watching on cell phones, and I want to make sure everyone's there. We go, perfect. Okay, so you said domains goes through; it, it reads everything that's in there, dude. Don't yeah, try to join I, my shit. Don't don't do that. I will ban you if I find out who you are. Don't be disrespectful like that. And you know, then it just. Puts, puts out all the domains. So can you, can you do that command one more time? So you go domain and you give it what? What's the argument you give it? Uh, none. Actually, it's just a shortcut, which I can share on Twitter. It's not a problem. Okay. And it goes into each folder that AMS created in this subfolder and just gives me all the domains it, it found so far. Nice. Okay. That's awesome. I have the same with IPs. And also oh, I see what you mean. So it's pretty much doing like a said or like a grep and it's pulling out all the stuff that it's in the file. So if you go to corp.net, like there are a couple of files here, like the ams.json. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that looks like this. And you know, it, it actually just parses out all the entries. So domain it. is pretty much catting this JSON file, pulling the name, IP is pulling okay. the IP and then see, okay, got it, okay. That's really cool, that's very creative, okay. Because then you can do something like once it's finished, I'm actually not sure if it is already. Um, no, it's still ongoing, which is fantastic. I, I think snap-dev is actually pretty neat. It's huge, yeah, yeah. Um, because once you have that, you can just do like domains and type that out into domains. And then you can do something like uh, cat domains and then you can like HTTP use... probe or whatever, whatever tooling like you have. HTTPX. Okay. Why? Why do you like HTTPX over probe? I don't know. It just feels faster, and then you Does all it? you you know can also t that output out into somewhere else, and then just um, I don't know use nuclei. Nuclei. Do you use you nuclear? Nuclei. I don't even know how to say it anymore. Nuclei. Nuclei. Uh, not not really. I mean, if I want to look for one specific thing, um, yes, I will use it. Um, but for the most part, no. It's I, <laughs> I love how, how my chat just is. my chat loves to prove me wrong someone in the chat's like i told you no how i'm like httpx is fast all right venom next time remind <laughs> me i'm gonna install httpx just for you i'm gonna try it yeah bro um, come on don't be annoying bro jesus people are trying to join because i leaked a link on accident people are trying to join but that's fine they'll get the claim. oh okay <laughs> i got triggered I mean, earlier but what am i gonna do with hackers um, so what I was talking about earlier was um, the result here from, so the end result of AMS. It actually shows you like where it got its results from and seven from API and one from the certificate for this specific domain. And what's also quite interesting is it gives you out the ASN 
that it found its results on. Wow. Okay. And if you if you see, for example, that a specific company has like a lot of results on on a given like subnet, it's quite smart to then also scan, scan the subnet the to see if they have more things on there because it's most likely that they will populate their assets on this given asset more. Wow, okay. Fair enough. Um, especially for Amazon. Like, you know, I, I think this one is probably, I don't know, East, like US East or so. Okay. And if you then look into this further, you can also find like other domains from this company. Can I ask you what syntax do you use for amass? So when you're amass.py that loops through all your domains, what are you are you doing slash passive? What do you like what syntax do you use for amass? Could you share that with everybody? Would you be open to sharing that? I'm absolutely open for that, but I'm not actually sure if I have something hard coded in in my um amass thing. So like how are you running amass? Are you going like a mass dash enum dash intel are you doing a combination of all of them can i just stop sharing for a yeah, second here, let me switch let me switch to my there. screen so you're, you're not on the screen anymore it's just me on the screen now okay oh, so we're gonna do a recap while patrick figures this out so what we did yeah. so far is we came up with a list of top domains top domains are the domains that a company owned so for example snapchat has snapchat dot com but because they're a huge company they own a bunch of other ones like uh, the products bitmoji their internal domains their cdns all those stuff is um what we pulled we pulled a small list of 10 there's a bunch more um patrick pulled up from security trails like a 30 domains i want to say 33 domains that were not included in our list but we went after the ones that are meaty like what i meant by meaty is like they're huge snap dot uh, snap no it's sc dash dev um sc dash corp all those domains are very very huge to have internal dev uh, environments on them so we're going after them and we're building a giant list of an overview of what this organization looks like and then we're going to pick, okay, now that we have all of these domains, we have the IP addresses that they resolve to, um, this is the domain name, this is the IP address. What do we do exactly? How do we pick our next target? And how do we prioritize what to look at that could yield us some vulnerabilities or at least give us um, a lead on a vulnerability or indicate that, okay, this is a big application that we should look for. Um, Patrick, ready to come back? Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. So we're going to go back to Patrick. The question was, how do you run a mass? Like what command do you run or what arguments do you give a mass um, to go after each supplement? So let's switch the screen. Patrick's on. All right, show me, Matt. What you got? Okay. Um, so I'm, I actually just shared this in the chat. Um, I'm using the enum function. Um, then I tell it to resolve the IP. Uh, let me just bring it on to my screen here. So I'm using the enum function, and then I tell it to also include the IP. Um, I create a directory using the host name, so okay. I can go back later. And then I also tell it, oh no, sorry, um, create a file with a host name, and, and I just tell it to actively enumerate the domains, I think. And then I point it to my config file, which I already shared on yeah, Twitter yeah. a few okay. weeks ago. So okay. you can look that up. It's not a secret at all. It Very just cool. contains all the the API keys and everything. Wow. Really not a big secret here. That's really cool. So you just run all of that. And that's pretty much running all of that right now on the screen. What's running is that command on every subdomain, on every domain that we have for Snapchat. Yeah. Okay, so people that are asking, what is config.ini? Config is a file that you can configure uh, how a mass works. Patrick has a actually published his. So go to Twitter. Um, his Twitter account is in the title of the stream. So somewhere down here, uh, it says at IT Security Guard. Go on Twitter, follow him. Uh, scroll down through his tweets and look for config.ini. Uh, he's already published it. I'll try to get a link of this for you guys to put him on um, Discord. So if you're not on Discord, make sure you join Discord. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get all this information from Patrick and myself and push them all to Discord for you guys to use. Okay. So what you can see here is AMS with, I think, around 30 threats or so Ooh. is 
running at the moment and as you can tell even though i have like 48 cores it's i would say it's like 10 percent like already maxed out and if you and we are only looking at like five or ten domains because what amos is doing in the background it's actually resolving a lot of stuff it's querying a lot of apis and it's actually it's it's quite powerful yeah. and it's doing a lot of things in the background and requires also a lot of memory um that's actually why i have this big machine because if it runs out like it just exits and then it's gone so yeah. it's not that fun we're gonna take a quick video of this for people to watch on instagram really quickly um so we can Absolutely. get people all right so we're still live with uh patrick aka it security guard we're doing some live hacking on snapchat so if you want to come see this live join us on twitch.tv slash naham or swipe up just another for secret up, by the way. go ahead for ams if you don't mind okay the cool thing if you put it into folders like this is ams has the option like it's it shows you a diff from each scan that you're doing yeah so it can show you like the new domains that came but you have to have like a, a first run and like this um this bold file which is some sort of a, a database file and once you have that in place you can then run it again and it would and it can then display you like the the things that were newly added and then so it does a diff run, sorry to interrupt you it does the diff based on the bolt file right the, yeah okay and then you can just look for the stuff that you know was added recently and you can run this like once a week once a day every two hours nice so let's do this let's do a um can you do a domains and um, overwrite your domain file again i know it's still running but um, for the sake of time, because uh, I know you is it's a little bit later for you than it is for me. Um, not time to do uptime. And we've been live for a good forty-seven minutes. I want to see what the domains looks like really quick, if you don't mind. Uh, so we have two hundred and ten domains. That's is that unique? Yeah. Okay. Um, now here's the thing. So you have two hundred and ten domains. We're not done yet here, right? We're, there's still yeah. more coming out. Now based on this list you know everything here resolves right uh or has yeah. an ip i just thought it resolves or at least what do you do how do you pick what to look at uh, i would say i'm looking for suspicious looking domain names first or maybe before that i would even do like a round of screenshots which i cannot do at the moment with this setup right because what do you use it, for it screenshots um What's it called again? Um, oh, the famous one. Eyewitness. No. Aquatone. Aquatone. Yeah, I'm okay. using that one. I mean, okay. everything with the slash, like, def, it's always interesting. Why? I know why, but I want to hear your thoughts. Why? For people that are watching this. Because it's a development uh, environment, most yeah. likely a development host where developers are actually actively building and trying out stuff maybe leaving debug enabled or you know similar things leaving like files that. behind backups or yeah. code or whatever okay also you know jenkins mm -hmm. um I that one specifically was owned. <laughs> so that one is the one that somebody else like five days before me owned it and then i owned the dot yeah. dev <laughs> the slash dev oh okay so yeah jenkins it's always interesting mm -hmm. every third party app that they're hosting there is interesting because it may be outdated it may have some cve yeah. floating around on the internet uh, wiki dash dev it's also quite interesting um i usually also look at backup because okay. it's backup do you not use um dns gen never did no i actually Controls. never brute forced anything um dns wise i should though um but it, it i don't know it takes ages uh, in my setup even with all the power that i have and i just rely on on the apis that i have okay um let's pick a uh, can you do me a favor do a cat domains and grip for snapchat.com 
Pokemon.com. I don't think it was in the list, was it? You forgot to pick it up. I think it was. Oh. Let me see mine real quick. Maybe I messed up. Ah, I did not put Snapchat.com in there. I'm an idiot. It's not a problem. I can just edit. Okay, let's uh, let's try. I want to just show like, cause Snapchat.com has um, the most apps. And I wanted to kind of see, like, they actually have apps, right? Because most of, like, SCCorp.net and .dev are usually behind um, SSO, unless you find that, like, one or two that's missing. But I wanted to see how you would um, pick your next target. So let's give it a sec. We're going to run this on Snapchat.com really quickly and see what happens. He did forget to put grip, but we also checked my list right here. Um, Snapchat.com is not on this list. God, How many so results weird. do you get for a Snapchat.com? Um, for Snapchat.com, um, so this is just based on um, recon.dev and nothing else. It's, let's see, Snapchat.com. Grab. Uh, let's just sort you. Oh, two. That's not good. Only two, apparently. Wait, why? Well, that doesn't make sense. It's not on Snapchat. Let me see Snapchat. Huh. Did I not do this? Uh, I'm using an old version of recon.dev. I have to port this out. Oh, wait. I didn't do Snapchat.com. That's why. Uh, let me do a recon.dev. Um, it wasn't in our list originally, right? So let's do this. Someone was asking me, how do I take notes? I usually don't. I don't either, Matt. My notes are like my dot .text files and yeah, the stuff yeah. that I've uh, found. I didn't like the text files, so I just have everything in those AMS folders. It's super nice and tidy. All you need to do is to have the root folder with the, your parent company and then. So I just did snapchat.com. Oh, what the hell? Why is it not? Did I not write it? Oh, I didn't write it out. Um, that's not good. Okay, I'm running it right now again. So 108 domains, unique domains. And uh, there's a lot of like wildcards for like api.snapchat mm -hmm. um, but outside of that there's 108 domains that i found just based on recon.dev certificates from a while ago the cool thing about amas is it doesn't show you the wildcard domains but sometimes a wildcard domain pointing to an ip address is you know a good indication of of a juicy server yeah but amas only shows you like things like full domain names pointing to an ip address nice um let's run domains on snapchat.com if you don't mind just to see what you have no no i mean like what do you have so far i'm trying to see like how many you have so far oh um huh i need a new window can oh, you okay. type out for a second i can definitely time out uh one sec Otherwise, there you go I have people no you're good yeah, there's a lot of trolls here today, which is fine. Um, yeah. Gotta love them. All right, what do you think, chat? What do you think so far? Has anyone seen any interesting domains yet? Like, is there any domains you have seen that stands out to you? Uh, let's see, who's on here? Solder of Jaw, what's up? I saw a few new subs, thank you so much. Um, she Cause, I think is your name. Thank you for that sub with Twitch Prime. Um, there was one more. I can't see your name, but thank you so much. I appreciate everyone supporting me and being a part of the channel. All right, let's see. Okay, it's okay. okay. They can connect. I can just reject them. Um, so we're gonna look at after scan, right? So personally, while Patrick does his thing, um, I'm gonna switch to my screen really quickly. There we go. So one of the things that I do is um, 
I like to scan. So there's two approaches, right? There's a recon approach is where you find those like very niche domains, right? Like you find something dot dev and you go look at it. There's some weird application you hack on it, right? Um, there's also the approach to look at stuff like actual applications that are not niche and are not like hidden. So I'm going to look for this really quickly. Um, and so this is one of them. Okay, this one doesn't have anything on it. This would be more of a recon approach, right? Because this is a 404 page on the index file. I'm almost willing to bet there is something on here. Um, but we'd have to like pretty much fish fish for it, right? We have to look for it and see if we can ever um, find it. But let's go back to our results. Let's look for something else. Um, there was shows apparently. There was something you called shows. So we're gonna go shows.snapchat.com. Let's see what that does. That's also a 404. What about ads? This is something that I found a Volnan, right? So we go here, there's an application you have to sign in. I'm not gonna sign into my Snapchat account right now, but you can sign up. There's an actual application. This is an ads manager. It's been probably pretty cool huge. watching you grow from 20 routine viewers to 10x that. Glad to be subbed, Ben. Sorry for interrupting. You're always welcome to interrupt me, man. But anyways, you see there's an application here as a login. That's a very good place to start because you have a huge application, a Snapchat ads website. This is where companies create ads. If you use Snapchat, you know how big the ads are, how many stories are out there, right? Every story has an ad. You create those ads. So this was a place where me, Zayed, and Dakin, uh, Serafina, actually found a vulnerability. Um, so this is an approach of the going more in depth versus going for recon, right? You find this application, you tear it apart until uh, you find a vulnerability or you move to the next one. So let's look at more subdomains um, that I would personally look at as a part of this. So um, let's see. Um, API is a good one. The, the ads, ad features, like you have to allow your customers to upload like mm. custom videos photos texts and everything and it's 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 risky for for the companies to allow them to do uh, such things and also they have to store the file somewhere yeah yeah i mean the whole thing is like they give you it, it just opens up a lot of doors like you have upload you have the tool that you can create ads with it takes a lot of user input there is a huge application with a ton of functionality there and you should test out every single one of them um okay are we good to switch to you yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's look at your screen. Okay. Um, so it's still enumerating stuff, um, which is fine. And so far for Snapchat.com, I'm at seven. Could you, sorry, could you uh, zoom in like six yeah. times on this new screen? There we go. Perfect. Now I know people can see it. So you have 72 domains. Not bad. Okay. So far. Um, this is 76 domains Patrick has that are not wildcard, right? Because it's a mess. No, no, no. It's, it's all unique. Okay. All resolvable. Oh. This is everything it finds so far. Um, nice. What's sometimes interesting to look at is actually if, if they have multiple IP addresses pointing to one domain, looking at the IP part separately. Why? Um, because sometimes you, you just find like a random IP address pointing to something which is not related to it, but yeah. it points there. And it's sometimes used for debugging purposes. Like I had luck by just directly going to an IP address, uh, skipping the redirect and was, you know, presented with an entire new application. Okay. So, you know, look at all of them, not only the first one. Yeah, yeah. What is that intg.snapchat.com? I'm curious. Let's pull it up real quick, chat. Intg.snapchat.com. Ooh, business help center. That's not anything good. But I don't think intg, right? That's what it was. It redirects to business. Um, Which one? Intg.snapchat.com. Oh, it's, it's actually www. Maybe that makes a difference. Uh, intg dot snapchat. So that one throws an SSL error. Let's see, this is unsafe. There we go. Now it goes to business help dot snapchat dot com. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. I'm coming back to your screen. 
Okay, so you pick, let's pick, um, so is your approach the same as mine, pretty much, what I was describing, like, domains that you pick? Yep, yep, pretty much. Let's look at events.snapchat.com on your screen, if you don't mind. I'm going to switch to mine, so you can switch screens if you like. Uh, you mean the browser? Yes. I'm okay. hoping it has something on it that we can poke. Or do you want me to do it on my screen instead? Yeah, do it on yours for a okay. second because it, it's actually a little bit lagging for me. No worries. Here, let's do it on my screen. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. Ooh, what is this? It's a 404 page. All right. So this is events. Please don't be a subdomain takeover. <laughs> <sighs> I hope it's not a subdomain. I really hope it's not a subdomain takeover, dude. It is. It looks like. It's going to Bizbo. Bizabo. Bizabo? Bizabo. I don't know. This one. Do you do subdomain takeovers, by the way? Uh, only. Only if if they just fall right into my eyes. <laughs> yeah, same here, man. Same here. Let's look for another domain. Um, what's inside that Snapchat? Is there a domain for that? No, but there's a story dash. Let's see. Story dash. Okay, so tell me this. Um, I'm going to give you a 404 site, actually, to make it a little bit weird. Um, let's do shows.snapchat.com. It is a page that shows 404 right off the bat when you go to it. I want to see what you do when you have a domain like that in front of you. Are you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm, switching um, to, I'm on your screen right now, FYI. Um, shows? Shows.snapchat.com. Okay, so you're looking for every instance of the word shows with snapchat.com and you're finding two instances. What has US East one, which is a different IP address too. Interesting. Okay, that's a very good approach. And then you have shows.snapchat.com. Yeah. Um, actually, this one, I can only see IPv6 addresses, which is, which is also quite interesting. And the first question here would be why? And Interesting. I'm seeing a cloud front for it, dude. Shows.snapchat.com is a cloud front when you ping it directly. Okay. Um, so what I would actually do is uh, probably looking at this one, US East dash one, um, but not looking at the at the host name itself, but rather this 5223-14099 IP. Okay. Because that's most likely resolving to the EC2 server. And see if something is yeah. And what did I get? I get a four oh four. Okay, there's actually nothing. I mean it's the same thing as the shows at snapchat.com, right? But you have the true IP and I don't even have that. I have uh, the cloud fund IP for it. Yeah, that's another thing. Um going by the IP mostly going by all the IPs mostly gets you around um, everything that is happening, you know, with CloudFront or any other annoying um, WFs. Um, let's see if something is so what do you typically do when you see a domain like that? Because like something like shows, I'm going to try this really quickly. Something like shows, it has usually, to have something on it, right? Um, do um, like FFUF. FFUF is okay. the name. Yeah. FFUF, yeah. And I just see if I can find like, I don't know, um, interesting files on there. I um, type with Snapchat. Oh shit, I did. Thank you. Uh, someone says, why did you pick up the last IP out of the three IPs that you just showed for shows? Um, that's a very good question. It's probably like, because I know that like everything with a five four, it's Amazon, it's EC two, and I don't know. Actually, a good a good question: Why I picked the last one? Um, I could have picked this one, but I think the ones with a hundred is also some CloudFront, CloudFront thing, I guess. Yeah. 
yeah yeah and 34 is also something on amazon but i think it's sort of a proxy stuff i'm not sure okay but, let's try yeah. another domain let's do um let me see if i can find you an app because i want to see what your approach is for this okay Main let's do focus.snapchat.com That is also a brand new app that I've never seen. So you see this app. This is brand new, by the way, chat. Um, and it looks like everything is alphanumerical. Yep, okay. All right, um, tell me, dude, what do you do here? Um, let me just make... I'm not on your screen, so you're welcome to do whatever you like right okay. now. Okay, cool. So I'm going to um, click around here while you figure it out. So this it looks like a content site. It looks like we yeah. need an account to... Do anything so on here. The first thing that I would do here on the focus app is probably look into the JavaScript because it looks brand new. Yeah. To me. And just looking into the JavaScript files, see what's actually in there. Okay. Pull it up. There so are a few tools out there like JavaScript endpoint parsers and use one of those. The JS parser, link finder. Okay. So I'm just going to go through these really quickly and see if we find. So there is some like student path, student enrollment mark has started, student enrollment. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys could see. Um, student enrollment marked has started, video complication, completion. So there's some like video stuff, but who knows what they're used for, right? Set unauthenticated post. This looks like a weird website, man. Mm-hmm. Really weird, really, really weird. I would do the same thing as you are doing at the moment, um, with the one exception that I would put on burp, so I have everything. What do you mean put on um, burp? You mean as in like crawling it? Yeah, as proxy, yeah. Do you want to show my how to do that? Can you show how you, what you mean by that? Oh no, I'm just opening burp. Okay, I'm gonna let you do that really quickly. Yeah, so I don't want to dox you by any by any means. Yeah. I'm gonna just poke at this. So we have to be logged in for this to work, it looks like. And it looks like it's a third party because it's Elenium, Intellum, Intellum? I don't know. Uh, but it looks really interesting. It looks like they're not, this is not their own platform, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks to be something third party. Well, that doesn't help, does it? But let's just do the active scan on there with yours, uh, if you don't mind, just to see what it looks like. Uh, just a second. They do let you log in with, yeah, they let you log in with it, but it goes to Intellum. Well, that did not help chat. But imagine if this was hosted by them, right? Like, I'm sure we can find some SSRFs in here or something. I don't know, I'm just... Guessing. There's going to be something in there. There's going to be an access to something easy if you find this earlier than anybody else. Which, like, the whole asset monitoring thing that, like, Patrick mentioned earlier is really helpful in this case, right? Because you get to monitor, this domain goes up immediately, you get to go on there and hack on it, right? Oh, wow. So someone in the chat said, someone in the chat said Twitter has subdomain on Intellium. And there were wounds that they found yesterday. I will check it now. Very cool. Does does Twitter pay for that? Sorry, what were we saying, Patrick? Oh, no, no, no. I was just um, mentioning that they also do have like this API with the category and stuff. And that's why I like to use um, Burp Suit while browsing. Yeah. Um, Can I switch like to your this. screen? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're on your um, screen. Let me press. You're on you now. Uh, can you do me a favor? I'm going to switch the screen really quick. Your um, your laptop is very visible on the other side. Oh, sorry. I got you. I'm doing great. Right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Uh, okay. You should see my entire screen now. Yep. I see your burp suite. Dangerous. Um, is it burp suite or burp no. suite? I, I you. <laughs> and what I usually do is go load the website, okay. try to 
authenticate and then see what has been requested. So you go, you authenticate, catch it, you go to Snapchat, you right click on the Snapchat focus right there and you say crawl. Uh, sometimes I do that depending on the, on the application, but th this time it does make sense. If it's like a bigger website, yeah, it can crawl into infinity. I can't zoom um, in on burp chat. Sorry, it's not as easy as a terminal, but you can kind of get the gist, right? Yeah. Um, also here, like it, it can, it can get like a little overwhelming for burp because you can see here the path and the collection and depending on how much things are in there, it's uh -oh. gonna spider like, you know, for, for an eternity. Um, but what I also usually do like is once it has spider for a little bit, and then I go to analyze target, which is super nice. And then I look for um, parameters. And it actually gives you like a lot of interesting parameters to start with, like a sword, which is sometimes like an indication for, I don't know, a SQL injection because. Right, because you know, a sword in, in, yeah, yeah. Same with uh, IDs and sometimes you get URLs. Uh, it's it's a lot of things that you can easily just like get from just looking at this target right. analyzer um yeah Very and cool. then you can switch around here do you do any brute forcing at a scale y you mean um like directory enumeration um, directory enumeration, but targeted against like specific things like documentation, Git folders, yep. you know. Yeah. So you have a list I, that you brute force for eventually. I actually have a, like 10 of them right here. Uh, I cannot show you the contents, unfortunately. No, that's okay. I don't. These are things that I don't expect people to share. It's just I want to know if that's something you do generally. It's like. Yeah, I have one which is like I have a lot of different files for different occasions. It's usually right. just picking word lists based on, I don't know, the target type, if you will. And mm. spring.py, for example, generates a list from, um, from common Java like endpoints, like heap dump, everything that Spring Actuator has to offer. And then I have a basic.py, which just would run everything with, um, you know, basic files that you can find anywhere. Yeah. And then I have a basic with folders, which would find basic files, but in given folders. And, you know, I have like 10, 12 of them. Very cool. So, um, Chat's asking if these are public. No, these are things that people come up with as they go along. So a lot of these are on, um, if you go on like Cyclist, a lot of these base ones yep. are online on Cyclist. Um, asset note, if you go to wordlist.assetnote.io, Shops has done such an amazing job giving some really good word lists. You grab those and you just add on to it as you go. This is something that I've done. I assume Patrick did something you have done also. You got the base, uh, you sorted all the text files that you have into different files, and then you just add manually to them as you find more interesting ones is that correct but do me one favor like sort them out look for the ones that are plausible yeah and don't just take anything because yeah. it will just waste your time you will just dos the server with nonsense i'm gonna be honest though i have an all that txt that i use uh, against things that i have no clue what to expect for <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 cool but the important part is like don't take any everything just you know build your own list like it, it will take a day like it will take multiple hours but just pick things that looks like it's an investment man like you're investing yeah. time to like sort things out to make yeah. it work for you right i think i spend like a week building my word lists just by you know deleting things that i don't think are that common mm -hmm. and other things are more common like if you see I don't know entries where you would where you would say like why would a developer do this just right. remove it just use things that you know make sense yeah and to be fair like um you don't go use a dot network let's like it's a jsp site right <laughs> yeah yeah okay 
Fair enough. And look at the common speak word list from from shops because that's yeah. like super smart because what common speak does is like use file names that you know a developer would use these days because it was so common on GitHub. I think that right. was literally the the idea behind it. Uh, I mean, he um, he pushed that to wordlist dot um, asset note dot io now. He does a lot more now at a scale. Yeah. Let me pull it and up for okay. people really quick. Wordlist.assetnote.io. So this is what it is. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it also. So this is automatically generated. Um, a lot of them are based on GitHub. So let's look at, for example, directories. Lots of stuff, like lots of WP ones. Obviously, WordPress is pretty big. But look at all these things that you get. Honestly, like a lot of these could be... This is like... This is not a the best way to do it because there's a lot of stuff here that you don't even know if it's usable but when you're desperate against an app that you think there's something on there then you just throw whatever you find at it right but stuff yeah. like php files right here there is uh 78,000 there's nothing wrong with throwing all of these against a user you know it's there's not I mean not a user against a site because especially since site that's php right superhero thank you so much for that raid i appreciate you so much man thank you so much um but yeah so like look at these Add the stuff that, like, let's say if you find something that's called uh, test.php, this is probably on here, but if it's not, what you should do is you should 100% add this manually to it if it's not a part of this already. Um, you should do that on your own, okay? So download these, make them work. If you find things that are interesting, you find it in a JavaScript file, you file it on GitHub, you file it somewhere, right? Make sure you put it in your word list later and use it as you go after more targets. Um. Ben, by the way, I was saying earlier that I don't think that Snapchat has its own IP space. I was horribly lying. Yeah, I, uh, I tried to say that to you earlier. <laughs> <They do. laughs> here it is. Um, so actually, my enumeration here is finished. Okay. Uh, are you sharing my screen? I'm on the screen, yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I have this CIDRs thing. And what I would do now, now that I know that they have, is to look for Snap. Um, let's do a grip dash I maybe. Yeah. Do a grip dash I make your life easy, dude. All right. And uh, now you. I can see that they actually do have two. Yep. And I would then probably look for more. Because So would you scan that range now? I would I would yeah. Probably what would you scan would, for? Um mass scan. No, yeah. what would you scan for? Like, are you pulling search or are you pulling for uh, subdomains um, and are you doing port scan? Yeah, I would port scan them first and see what comes up okay. and then do HTTPX on and see which ports actually do have, you know, something, a web server running. Yeah. And then do the same things on there. But I guess what I would do first is take this one the sc dash core and throw it into security trails again. Yeah, I'm gonna switch my I'm gonna switch my screen for you so you can do okay there we go. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um because you can actually also look for IP spaces on here. Yeah. So it's like showdown but better. <laughs> right. <laughs> And the cool thing here now is that it shows you like the host names that it found on this given IP space. Nice. Like lastline.sc.corp.net. Let's see what that is. Let's see lastline.sccorp.net. Probably under SSO, but yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I can't open it at all. Maybe you can ask. Okay, so this one doesn't open. Can we open it by IP maybe? I'm on my okay. screen. I don't know if you want to share your screen or not. Oh, no, no. You, you, like, oh, okay. I'm just... Yeah, let's see if we can open up by IP address if we have the IP for it. Because that's really interesting, yeah. right? Because it knows this thing is hosted on there. Do you um, need the IP? Go ahead and try it. And then, yeah, if you want to share it with me, I can look at it too. Yeah, you can show my screen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not looking at your stream at the moment. No to worries. Let me see. It's bandwidth. That's, this is actually the IP it's on. 248.13. 
Interesting. So you can't access it anymore, from what I see. No, but it was there like a year ago. Yeah. Can we ping it? Nah, it's hanging. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. Um, very cool, man. That's really awesome. Um, that was really helpful. I've I've always underestimated the power of a mass, man. I don't understand why, but it looks like we got to do some really interesting things with a mass. Yeah, I would highly recommend to do so because it's it's amazing. I'm I'm not sure about the the actual like result if there are any tools that give you more. Um, but I value like the good results more than you know, yeah. the big amount of IPs because I see people like comparing their tools on Twitter every time and saying, yeah, but mine found like ten million domains. Honestly, though, man, like I don't know why it matters. Like it's not a competition. That's why I don't understand. It's not about who has the best tools. Just hack and make some money. People, I think people spend too much time in fancy tooling. And forget about the fact that like there's actual work to be done. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Could you do me a favor since we're done with the scans? Uh, could you drop me this, um, those domains if you don't mind um, your domains? Just and I'm gonna just no, I mean like the whole file, like the one that you have that has everything, the JSON files, if anything. Um, I don't know how it'd be the easiest way to do it, but if you could give me like the output of your scan so I can share it with everybody in Discord. Uh, you're welcome yeah, to show it on Twitter if you want. I can just share your tweet instead if you want to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to quit my share okay. now. Cool. Do you play chess, by the way? No, I don't. Well, I was going to say, I, I wanted to find a way. And you know how I played a game uh, of questions at the end of my streams? I was going to yeah. play a game of chess with you. I'm, I'm not really good at chess, but I was going to play a game of chess with you and just kind of... Do you know how to play at all? I don't, oh, unfortunately. Unfortunate. All right, well, next time, I mean, Wolf. We can play Warzone. Um, do you have Warzone, Warzone ready? I would say. Chat, should we do a Patrick and Ben Warzone really quick before uh, we end the stream with him? Oh, well, that's even more embarrassing. Than <laughs> All right, let's do it. What are we going to do? Warzone? Warzone. Let me switch to me. I got to exit Discord because Discord does not like. Let me see. All right, chat. I'm going to boot up. We're going to play a real quick round of Warzone. And then uh, I'm going to come back and do some hacking on Snapchat, maybe. Depending on what time it is. Okay. Oh, by the way, I completely ignored the entire chat. So if there are any questions, like hit me up on Twitter anytime. Not a problem. Yeah, I try to be very active at reading the chat for us. Um, but if you, again, like, like Patrick said, you can see his ad in the chat. Um, his IT security guard on Twitter. And um, yeah, send him your questions, man. He's been very helpful. He's got a lot of... You have a good perspective on life right, with bug bounties. You've done the hacking. You've done the program management, the triage. You've been on all ends of it. Um, so you have some really good insight on all this stuff. No, I'm going to take Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, make sure you guys are on part of Discord. Um, I'm going to drop all of these uh, domains and subdomains and IP addresses and things that we have found on Discord right now. I think Patrick just sent it to me. Um, so we're going to do it. Also, while we wait for the game to load, what did you guys think of this uh, the series, this new Recon Sunday format? Um, should we put a pause on doing interviews for now and bring on more guests to do hacking with me? Because, I mean, for me, it's really cool to see people how, like, what Patrick just said was entirely different than what I do, right? I'm just here doing search data search and... Um, recon.dev because I like the quick recon and not too in depth but he's here like oh I got a mass that does all these things for me okay fair enough bring a guest and hack together all right we'll keep doing this um why isn't my war zone loading though I don't get it 
All right, if my game doesn't load chat, we may have to do this another time. Because it's literally not like loading for me. It says playing now, but it doesn't freaking open. Also, let me know who you guys want me to bring next. Um, Patrick was the first guest for 20... By the way, we were the first 2021 guest, just so you know. Um, but also, like, he saved my ass very last minute, which I'm forever grateful for. Okay, this freaking game doesn't want to load. It's playing with me now. Are you loaded into the game already? Um, let me see. Uh, just updated. It should be good to go. Mine says playing now, but I don't even see it in the list of my apps right now. Hmm. Oh my god. Get a PC, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Bro, I didn't have these issues with my freaking Xbox when I was playing games on there. Oh, right, you're an Xbox player. Used to be an Xbox player. Oh, you got a PS5? No, I'm on. I play on my PC now. Oh, interesting. I have my Xbox because it has 4K on it. And I just watch them on there. <laughs> <laughs> I watch stuff on there. Bro, please load. It's just one game I want to play. Okay, let's see. It's trying to load, but. Bro, fucking load the game. What's cringe? Raccoons, what do you mean? Cringe what? Yeah, I like the one that JP Dev is, is suggesting to do a practical, like a theoretical interview first and then a practical second. Yeah, so what I'm going to do for, if this series takes off, like what we're going to do is um, I'm going to bring back guests that I've already interviewed. So Patrick was a really good example. Haddix would be a good example. Fran I would love to have Doggy G friends or all of them on here too. And kind of showing how other people do. Because I feel like a lot of people do think like um, we have some weird like customized tools. We all use the same fucking tools, right? Like it's the same thing. Yeah, we just, but we all use them sort of differently and we right. all look at different things. And that's probably why we still make some bounties here and there. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same tool. You just got to get really familiar with using them. Yeah. Sure. All right. My war zone is not going to work, my friend. I'm trying really hard and it's not letting me. I reset battle.net too. Um, Are they, they banned you for cheating? <laughs> that would be very, very sad if they did for hacking. All right. That doesn't work. Um, we'll cut this short. But hey, man, I, seriously, thank you so much for joining, dude. This was really, really helpful. This was really, really awesome to do. Um, thank you so much for being here, man. Um, you're, and thank you so much for sharing openly with us. You know, a lot of, a lot of good stuff for me. Like Amas, it looks like it's going to be our next move chat. We're going to have to spend a few Saturdays maybe on Amas and getting better at it. Um, do you have anything you want to say before I let you go, man? Any advice, any tips, anything you want to plug? Um, no, but the directory enumeration, it looks kind of nice already. You've already done some enumerating. You want to share your screen? I can, sure. Okay. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to have Patrick show us his um, director enumeration. Um, and then we're going to call it a day. Uh, we'll do a war. I got to I gotta reboot my computer, but we got to do wars on one day or some other games. Yeah. Absolutely down. I'm going to try and cut this up to a little bit shorter. So this, after this, when I started the war zone thing, isn't going to be in the um, YouTube version. I don't think, I don't know how it's going to work. I may have someone edit these for me and post them. Um, but I'm going to post this on YouTube. So if you join late and you didn't get to see the whole thing, they'll be live on YouTube um, for people to watch. And next time with the next guest that I bring on, um, we're not going to hack on Snapchat. We'll do another target. So this way you guys get new um, targets to look at every time. Okay. Okay, let me know once you're ready. I'm ready when you are, man. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so we're gonna look, oh, nice, okay. So what you can see on the left here is like F off running. And I have this shortcut that, you know, parses the output of F off. Okay. And, you know, I grab for only the 200. Nice. And, you know, you can already see like interesting stuff, some not so interesting. Um, what I love to look for are <clears throat> those, where is it again? I hope it's it's big enough actually. 
the application.waddle because this is the um, the API description. Yep. yep. Um, love to parse those. Already looks quite interesting because I've never heard of SRS replay. Uh, could you um, triple, quadruple zoom on that? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's actually just like the description of the API. You can go from here. You can look at every um, API endpoint from here. It's it's the entire description of the application. Yeah. I found like a million bucks just, you know, playing around with the API in here. There is a tool for Burp uh, that parses those things and imports them into Burp. I cannot mm. recall the name, but if you look for open API parser, you will find it and then just uh, hook it into Burp and look for that. Interesting. Okay. What is, uh, wait, hold, I saw a NPM lock go up. That was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Let's click actually, it. If you don't mind. Oh, wait, I think. For NPM. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. That's actually in there. Mind blown. <laughs> Nothing sensitive, but I don't think so, no. Oh, but it's, it's like a little stack trace. Yeah. Interesting. This would be like a first indication to actually look further into the web application because I know that they are using NPM. Let's see what's on the root folder on this real quick. If you don't Sorry? mind. Let's see what's on yeah, this yeah, website. I was about doing the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to grab for this domain and see what else you found on it? Uh, just for this one? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to show the thought process, right? We just see NPM log is there. Now let's just see what, what else you have found on this domain. That might be 200. So we have an index.js. JS. Super interesting. Wow. Okay. So it gives you an idea as Django. Yeah. Um, port 8080. Is there something running on 8080 maybe? No, I don't think so, right? They're just... Just test that out. Yes, Definitely I will upload know this how things work with Namsek and myself. <laughs> it goes <laughs> like this all the time. He does something, I do something. That's interesting. Yeah. Though. What else is on there? That's really, really good though. That, that gives you some idea of like what to look for at least. I mean... Oopsie. Um, what is this? I mean, I know what it is. I, probably it's not here. Yeah, more than likely. They already like messed up some permission from this server. You never know. No, okay. Um, what was on there? It's package.json. Sometimes it tells you what they use, and you can get some paths out of it. But Giphy web app. Oh, okay. So it's a Giphy web app. You can see it on. Oh, wait. Is there a main.js on here? main job no oh, okay uh, it's it's still ongoing so it could be that it's your clipboard it's usually uh, flash vulnerable to um swf based cross-site scripting but yeah, i'm good off of those that's really good though man holy shit okay what is that ads report at html let's check it out this one um this is basically just uh, from from an extension it shows you uh, like which file um, consumed the most memory while loading it I think that's what it is but yeah. it's it's sometimes quite interesting because it gives you like all the all the files right it gives you a good directory yeah you don't have to brute force for it right <laughs> yeah. nice man very well done that's very organized See, I'm not that organized, man. I just go random. I pick a target, I go after it. I don't do like, that's really nice to do. Um, how do you, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, by the way, I shared this thing already on Twitter, like the, the, like what this RR thing is doing. I shared this on Twitter. So it gives you like the file size, then the, um, the IP, uh, the, the URL, and then the um, HTTP code. Do you mind showing us how you run your FAF? Uh, you don't have to even show us just tell me like I export this and I use these arguments for example I use so many things in Fuff okay. so I cannot recall them out of my head but I, I use a lot of extensions like there's a list, a list of all the web extensions that are out there 
and I'm using most of them like PHP, ASP, ASPX. Mm -hmm. Then I give it the direction to my um, to my uh, to the to the word list that I'm using. And I'm also using one thing that I'm going to show you for a second. Um, so I have I have a folder here which is called data. Yeah. And a cool feature about um, Fuff is that it can store the files that it found. Nice. Okay. So the cool thing here is that, like, let's say, like, a server is online once I scanned it, and it goes offline like half an hour later, and I look at my results, and you know, I cannot request the file anymore, but I know it used to be there. Then you have a, co a backup copy in here. Like, this is actually the file. B three B. It actually downloads the entire file into here. Nice. And then I also like I don't know. Have the output something like this. So, oh, actually, this one shows me the yeah. This one is actually the um, my f of. Like I use the dash w with the word list. I use like I don't know like, you know, just the fast. I add a oh. user agent. I don't include this those HTTP right. codes. I use the following extensions. Holy crap, like a I lot said, of extensions. I use the data directory to download the files that it found. And yeah, I think that's it. I don't do recursion because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can do it later, right? Why do you give it media partners for an agent? Um, it's actually randomizing the user agent. So okay. I have a list of user agents that it picks it from. Okay, and so one of them is, I don't know, some uh, random things because you can look it up. Like there's a list with most common like user agents. And the one thing is if you don't do it, Fuff by default uses its own. Yeah, uh, it's a And fuff. it's so easy for web application firewalls to detect like once the first request with Fuff comes in, like just block all dropped. the others because they actually know what's going on so yeah. i'm trying to hide a little bit what is happening yeah it's very useful to do uh, a real user agent right in a lot of cases yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay uh, also because websites they do like um behave differently um and so just a tip man like i love everything you're doing not to correct you but also for graphql no i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> when you exclude 400, you may miss out on GraphQL a lot of times. Do I? Because GraphQL Maybe. sometimes by default comes back as 400 and says bad request, missing get uh, missing get query. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a good point. I may I may uh, remove that part, but yeah, it's it's a lot of junk and like depending on how many domains you do right. this concurrently. Whoa, Webalizer. That can't be real. That's not real. Reports. Of, no, I don't believe that. There's no way that's real. That's you, can, real. you can actually okay. tell if it's a thing if you look at the <laughs> at the response line. Yeah, yeah. Like here, you can actually tell just from looking into into the response length. It's everything that is served here is the same. Almost the same. Yeah. Only a little bit is changing, so it's usually not what you're looking for. Very cool, man. I think we got a little bit longer, but this is very, very useful, man. This was an hour and a half of like truly Ooh. doing recon together, and I love that. I'm so glad you did this with me. Um, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> that can't be real, man. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> okay, it's unfortunately it's not, real. not real, but you you would be amazed what you can find. Patrick's trying to get me banned on Twitch again with all these clicking around. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm stop clicking now. Sorry. Jim. All right, let's bring you back on, mate. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I'm just gonna push this to this vod to. Uh, I'm not gonna edit. it. I'm just gonna post it on um, YouTube so people can see it raw and uncut. Enjoy it. Yep. Enjoy your Sunday night, man. I will see you at work tomorrow. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have to go to work, but I appreciate you a lot, man. I. I Thank you so much for doing this with me, man. I really yeah, appreciate anytime, it. Yeah, anytime, anytime, dude. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, man. We'll talk soon. Have a good night. I'll talk you to you as later. well. See you. Bye bye, now, homies. <laughs> See you, dude. What a guy, man. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I was nervous doing this uh, group hacking thing just because of the fact that I don't know what, how it's going to happen, right? Like, things could go wrong really quickly. Um, I saw for a second we almost had 300 viewers. <sighs> crazy um but yeah that's it 
this was it. I'll be back online tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go get some food. I'm hungry. I woke up really late again. I couldn't sleep last night. But I'm out. I love you. Let's uh, let's rate someone. And let's show them some love. Let me fix my camera. Ooh, in focus. There we go. All right, listen. I know you guys want to do more hacking. But I need you to do me a solid favor. I'm going to rate someone. And I want you to represent and be as loud as you can with being a Nahomi. Don't back out on me. Don't leave because I'm rating somebody else. Support another creator, man. Why are we Why are we backing out? We're going to go and rate someone that's doing some sort of hacking, ethical hacking, because that's what we do. Um, let's see who's online that we can do this to. The Alt F4 stream is live. All right. Listen, we're going to we're gonna raid. I need you to be as loud as you can. I want you to spam not don't do too many spam emotes but i want you to like drop some nahomi emotes and show them where we're coming from okay i'll be back online more than lucky tomorrow i appreciate you guys so much thank you for all the new followers thank you all the new nahomi to subscribe make sure you're on discord i'm going to try and drop all these information that patrick gave us on discord and we're going to have some more fun tomorrow i'll bring back another guest next week hopefully I can get jason haddix to come on here uh but if we don't we'll find somebody else I appreciate you. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Be nice to each other. Please be nice to each other. Life's too short. Uh, be nice to one another. Other than that, I'm out. I appreciate you guys. Peace. Blog message? Ah, okay. Hey, I found it. <laughs> Think. Hey, love that. Baby. Cannot be using the message. Oh, bitch. Dot. Equals? Determine whether the specific object Hello is there. equal. Oh, that's what we want. Yo! Dude, that was sick! <laughs> Hello there. How's it going, man? You caught me like.